Today we know that 9 out of 10 Americans are metabolically unfit, and half of Americans have diabetes or prediabetes. What that means is have elevation in blood sugar, elevation in triglycerides, and an elevation in blood pressure. And that is metabolic disease or metabolic syndrome. And nitric oxide is going to affect all of those. In fact, nitric oxide can reduce triglycerides by 27% in 30 days. It's one of my patents. Nitric oxide certainly improves blood sugar control, improves glucose uptake, improves insulin sensitivity. And nitric oxide is a vasodilator going to help regulate blood pressure. So that's what nitric oxide is. That's what nitric oxide does. But look, there's so many contributing factors to the regulation of blood sugar. If you don't have a gallbladder, get gallbladder disease and you can't absorb fats, that's going to affect overall metabolism. If you you don't make stomach acid and you're on antacid, it's going to affect your pancreas function and the, not just the secretion of the hormone insulin, but also the exocrine pancreas. The other thing in regulation of blood sugar is you have to move. You have to exercise. Burning calories, the input of calories, the quality of the calories. But at the end of the day, no matter what your diet is, if you're straight vegan, straight carnivore, we have to maintain glucose. So glucose is going to be absorbed from the food you eat, or you're going to make it from fat, from the breakdown of fat, or you're going to make it from the breakdown of protein, or you're going to release it from glycogen stores in the liver, in the muscle. So there is no substitute for a good diet. There is no substitute for exercise. It's a combination of both. And those that don't have basic metabolic functions because of a cholecystectomy and no gallbladder on in acids, it's really disrupting normal metabolism. Nitric oxide is going to help. It's not going to fix it. Nitric oxide in cancer is still an emerging field, and there are really two camps. You've got the camp that says never give a pro-angiogenic factor such as nitric oxide to a person with metastatic disease because it'll open up the blood vessels and, and increase the metastatic disease. There's the other camp, which I'm included in, that says that cancer controls its own oxygen environment. Cancer only grows in a low oxygen, low pH, low voltage environment. In fact, the tumor is hypoxic or low oxygen by design. So if you can open up the blood supply, dilate those micro blood vessels, those micro capillaries, and oxygenate that hypoxic tumor environment, you basically create an environment that cancer doesn't like. The other thing, even going back, is cancer is a metabolic disease that occurs over time. You have uncoupled mitochondria, you have the Warburg effect. Again, Otto Warburg won a Nobel Prize in 1931 for the discovery of cancer cell biology. Low oxygen, low pH, uncoupled mitochondria, call it aerobic fermentation. If you can correct those conditions, oxygenate the tissue, recouple the electron transport chain, improve tissue oxygenation, which is what nitric oxide does, then you create an environment where the cancer cells can't grow, can't proliferate, uh, and can't replicate. So for me, I wouldn't have any hesitation about giving a patient with an aggressive form of cancer, whether it's a primary tumor or metastatic disease. But again, these are conversations you should have with your treating physician. Understand the risk benefit of everything you're doing in combination with other therapies you may be undergoing. But nitric oxide itself as a molecule is anti-cancer.